Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Welcome to the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards 2016. EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016. Recognized and rewarded India's most exceptional entrepreneurs and business leaders who have brought about change through their exemplary work, grit and determination. India is a country of entrepreneurs. It is a very, very strong, uh, inspirational thing for an Indian to succeed as an entrepreneur. And I'm also very pleased with the outcome. It's a wonderful list and truly explains and defines the India of today and tomorrow. Celebrating the stories of these winners is the Passion to Win series, showcasing India's best innovators and game changers. Hello and welcome to a special four-part series, Passion to Win, celebrating the winners of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 Awards. I'm Shireen Bhan. Now, through the course of this series, we will bring you the stories of 12 entrepreneurs who've disrupted their industries through their ideas and innovation. They've spurred new trends, which is an inspiration for all. Our first entrepreneur on the show has transformed the auto component industry and is a leading supplier of auto parts to some of the biggest names in the business. Vivek Chand Segal, the co-founder of the $7.2 billion Noida based Samvardhana Madhusan Group, started his career at the age of 17. My grandfather being a jeweler and was exporting silver, so what he did was he said, look, from your college, which was near the airport, if you could pick up the silver once a week or once to, twice a week or something like that and take it to the airport, I'll give you one rupee a kilo commission. I started doing that and um, at the same time, the Hunt brothers, very famous Hunt brothers of US, started to corner the silver. So instead of doing one ton in two weeks or something like that, we started doing two to three tons per day. So I was suddenly a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, rolling in money. And my father then said, well, you know, uh, it's a good idea. Why don't you and your mother make a company? And he called the company Mother Son. In 1976, the silver boom over, Vivek Chand Segal set up a wire factory. But in 1983, his fortunes changed. Our fortunes really changed in 1983 when uh, Maruti Suzuki came in. Maruti Suzuki came in, they started looking for wiring harnesses. And uh, the whole thing depended upon a T-connector. And this T-connector was given to me so that I could get the drawings. We actually sat overnight and got this T-connector made in hand molding. So it was a hand mold, I had it in my briefcase, I took it out and I put it in front of him. I could see his jaw drop. He was absolutely uh, impressed. He took me to meet his director. The one Dr. Deshpande at that time, and uh, I was issued the drawings, and seven days later, I had the joint venture in my hand. In 1986, Madison Sumi Systems, the flagship company of the group, was established. A joint venture enterprise with Sumitomo Wiring Systems of Japan. The collaborator that we picked was a company called Toka Electric. And uh, a year uh, later, we were told that they're actually a Sumitomo company. So when we set up the joint venture, it was became Madhusan Sumitomo. So that uh, is where the current company uh, gets its name from. Some of the main reasons for the success of Sambardhana Madhusan Group was the fact that they made auto components their core competence, and this helped them expand globally as well. We were into commercial vehicles, we were into two-wheelers, we were into cars, we were into anything and everything to do with automotives, we were there. Uh, I think the first feel that we had to go out of India to, to catch uh, some uh, more volumes uh, came uh, somewhere around 97, 98 when we actually requested uh, our, one of our top guys to go down to Europe and set up. But uh, from that small... Uh, a step of ours, 
Today, we come into a situation where 88% of our turnover is coming from outside, or plants which are related outside. So, I think it was a small step, but a very important turning point in Madhusan's uh, this thing. What sets Samvardhana Madhusan Group apart is the way it is managed and the unique way in which it has grown. The kind of growth that was, at least I could see, not this kind of growth, but at that time, whatever little we could see, I felt that I couldn't do it by myself. So I actually resigned in 1995. I completely resigned from the managing director, never stopped, I mean, I didn't take any salary or anything from the company, and brought in professionals. And uh, I could see the, the sea change that these guys could bring because you were empowering them to take the decisions. We do not have any preferences that we particularly will take this particular person and put him there or something like that. In fact, we don't like to put people out of their element. We'd rather do the local this thing. And I think 90% of the acquisitions that we have done, the company which had gone bankrupt with the same management, we have kept the same management, same plant, same everything, and yet turned the company around dramatically. The company has a five-year roadmap that it keeps setting for itself and has successfully managed to beat its estimates consistently. We actually set up uh, a five-year plan which we printed in our annual report, which was a heads up for the next five years. Actually put the top line and the bottom line. So we said growth just for growth is not what we want. We want growth and it should be equitable. So there should be profitability coming at the end of the day to the company. After five years, we actually were very, very successful. We actually crossed our five-year target. Uh, it took us uh, six years to do that, but it doesn't matter. We did that. Uh, in 2004-05, we set up the next listing, which was 10x. We crossed that also. We had set a target of 40% return capital employed. In fact, I think, if I'm not wrong, we did 39%. We set the next five-year target, and we were again going 10x. We were going to go from 1,000 crores to 10,000 crores. We achieved that also, and with a focus on the bottom line. Since then, four of our five-year plans have been well executed, and we've always uh, met our targets. The next five-year plan, which is already there, uh, we are going to go to 26 billion by 2020 with a 40% growth. The Samvardhana Madhusan Group is a force to reckon with in the auto component industry globally. Samvardhana Madhusan Group has nine basic verticals. We have about 214 plants all over the world. We're in 26 countries. Vivek Chand Segal shares the secret behind the success of the Samvardhana Madhusan Group. I think the, the success of Madhusan is not the success of one individual. I think it's, it's 85,000 people. They are working together. They're committed together. Vivek Chand Segal has touched many lives during the course of his career. Here is what his closest colleague had to share about him. So what drives him probably is one of the things we feel is that he believes that he got a chance and he wants to give chance to many others. And uh, touching the lives of all the 85,000 people who are directly employed in the group, plus uh, many others who are indirectly linked, is to give each one of them a chance to better their lives and to keep improving. Vivek Chand Segal is truly a visionary and has proven time and again that he has the passion to win. Vivek Chand Segal, the co-founder of Samvardhana Madhusan Group, was awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 award. EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2016. He's none other than Mr. Vivek Chand Segal. It's time now for us to head into a short break, but on the other side, we introduce you to an individual who's helped India go digital with the UIDAI Aadhaar Initiative. The story of Nanda Nilikani coming up.
Welcome back. You're watching our special series, Passion to Win. Our next winner is an entrepreneur and author. He was also the chairman of the Unique Identification Authority of India and responsible for creating the ecosystem for digital financial services in the country. He's played a vital role in the growth of the Indian IT sector. We're talking about none other than Nandan Nilikani. Here's a look at his story. After passing out from IIT Bombay with an electrical engineering degree, Nandan Nilekani got a job offer from NR Narayanamurthy. I was looking for a job and I was very fortunate that I met Mr. Narayan Murthy, who at that time was the head of the software group at a company in Mumbai called Patni Computer Systems. And I worked with him and other wonderful colleagues there. And about a couple of years after we uh, all worked together uh, under the leadership of Narayan Murthy, we said we should start our own software company, which was going to be a very professional company, which practiced high standards of corporate governance, which had a global outlook, which was uh, friendly to professionals, and so on. And that led to the foundation of Infosys in July of 1981. Nandan played a plethora of roles at Infosys and helped the company reach great heights. I was part of the founding team at Infosys and I was a director of the company from day one and I, had a, I did a lot of roles at Infosys, marketing, sales, delivery. I was uh, also CEO for five years from 2002 to 2007 and co-chairman for a couple of years. So while I was at Infosys, uh, we grew the company from the original, you know, sort of seven people who began it to 100,000 people and uh, multi-billion dollars of revenue. Nandan Nilekani wrote a book called Imagining India, highlighting the problems faced by India and a need to create a digital ID. And somewhere in January of 2009, the cabinet had approved the creation of a body called the Unique Identification Authority of India with the mandate to give every Indian resident a unique ID. So I heard about it and it was also in line with what I had written about in my book. So I had some discussions with the government. And then the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, invited me to take a job in the government at a cabinet rank and take charge of this project. Sometime in July of 2009, I left Infosys and started my job as chairman of the UIDAI with a mandate to give a billion people an Aadhaar number. So it was called as Unique ID, the, the name we gave it was Aadhaar, which means foundation. And for this, we assembled a crack team of uh, bureaucrats who came to work with me from different parts of the government, as well as people from the private sector, technologists, marketeers, uh, people who had done such large systems before. And we assembled a very eclectic group of people from very different backgrounds. We had our head office in uh, Delhi, our administrative office, and we had a technology office in Bangalore. I had promised that in five years we would reach 600 million people with an Aadhaar number. We actually reached that in four and a half years. At which point I said I'd done my duty and I stepped down. Aadhaar today is the basis for many transactions and is the backbone of efficient delivery of welfare services. Direct benefit transfer which transfers money directly into people's bank accounts is using the Aadhaar platform and uh, India has done over 1 billion transactions or 100 crore transactions of money into people's bank accounts. And today there are more than 370 million or 37 crore Aadhaar linked bank accounts which have in, into which billions of dollars has been transferred. And uh, the government has said that using the direct benefit transfer and eliminating the ghosts and duplicates in beneficiary databases, they've been able to save something like 35,000 crores. So that's a huge uh, benefit from, from this whole project. The second thing is that uh, it's also the basis for doing what's called EKYC, Electronic Know Your Customer, where you can use an Aadhaar, get your name and address from the Aadhaar database, give it to a bank or a mobile company, and they instantly open a bank account or give you a SIM card. Now this is an extremely popular feature. When Aadha was created, it was created a digital ID which would be verified on the cloud using your fingerprint or iris. 
So this authentication feature is also very popular. Today there is a government attendance system where 700,000 government employees actually clock in and clock out using an Aadhaar authentication. And we are also creating a system where people who don't have any phones can access their cash using the Aadhaar enabled payment system or do a merchant transaction. Nilekani also helps develop a mobile payment interface that has helped India go cashless. Uh, for the smartphone user, using something called the unified payment interface, again something which I helped to design as an advisor to the National Payment Corporation of India, uh, that is a very sophisticated mobile to mobile payment interface, on top of which the government has launched an application called Beam. Bharat interface for money and Bheem is can be used by any smartphone user to send and receive money. So the 250 million people in the country who have smartphones can just download Bheem, connect it to the bank account and start transacting uh, both person to person payments as well as merchant payments. Similarly, uh, the NPCI has revamped its feature phone application on a platform called USSD which again allows you to send and receive money very easily and that's also built on the same unified payment interface which means that 600 million people in India who have the phones can easily transact no matter what kind of phone they have using the technology which is out there. And then for the people who don't have phones they can use the Aadhaar number and authenticate and either withdraw money or buy things at, at a merchant. And that's called Aadhaar enabled payment system or Aadhaar merchant pay depending on whether it's cashless, uh, cash or cashless. So basically a billion people now have access to digital financial services either on the smartphone or on the feature phone or just using the Aadhaar number. Nandan Nilekani has also developed a technology platform for GST. I was also involved with the technology for GST because about uh, four or five years back when Mr. Pranam Mukherjee, the now the president at that time, he was the finance minister, uh, was very keen to implement the GST. And we had discussed that having a technology platform for GST before the tax comes was a very important uh, requirement. And that building the platform would take some time. So it was very best to actually create the infrastructure for technology ahead of the tax coming. And he was very kind and uh, he accepted this uh, recommendation and I was appointed as the chairman of the empowered uh, committee on IT for GST. This was about 2012 or thereabouts. And uh, when I was there, uh, we actually came up with the GST and design. The whole idea was to design it in a way that tax payment happened through technology and everybody has to be in the tax system. Nilekani, along with his wife Rohini, is working on his new venture, Eight step to address the challenges of literacy and numeracy. In the last uh, two years, uh, my wife and I have funded uh, Eight step of which I am the chairman, and we are trying to address the challenge of literacy and numeracy on smartphones. So our idea is to create a platform with very relevant and energized content for literacy and numeracy so that millions of small children can use this uh, content on their phones, at home, at school, at a tuition teacher, wherever they are. And we are creating a whole ecosystem of partners to enable this. Nanda Nilakani is doing his bit for the startup community by mentoring entrepreneurs and investing in innovative startups. One of the things I, I do today is uh, promote the startup ecosystem. So I do it through many ways. One is uh, I do it at an industry level. I work with an organization called iSpirit, which is a product, uh, software product sort of a group, think tank. And we do lots of things to get more and more startups to embrace technology or learn how to scale operations and so on. So that's all you know, public stuff I do. And I also, on a very selective basis, uh, do a few investments. So I have about 10 or 15 investments, and there I guide these entrepreneurs on strategy, scaling up, culture, values, because I want to see all these being successful. Here is one of Nandan Nilekani's close associate talking about his trends. In Nandan, I found somebody 
who is a combination of a great visionary and a great executor and his vision can straddle economics, policy, technology, social, for profit because of his belief that there are some solutions that are best done by markets, some others that are best done by governments and yet some others that are best done by society. Nanda Nilekani is truly a one-man think tank who wants to solve India's problems through technology and entrepreneurial leadership. Nanda Nilekani was awarded the EY Lifetime Achievement Award 2016 for his contribution to the Unique Identification Authority of India, the Aadhaar Initiative, which is a pioneering citizen identification program unparalleled in its scope and scale worldwide. The Lifetime Achievement Award. The one and only one, Nandan Nilakin. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, Mr. Nandan Nilakin could not join us this evening, but we do have a message from him. Let's have a look. It's a great privilege and honor to be selected for the Ernst & Young Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm deeply sorry that I'm not able to come here personally to receive this award, but let me assure you that this is an award which I value deeply and I'm very grateful to the jury and I commit to continuing to do my work in a way befitting this award. That's a wrap on the first episode of this special four-part series celebrating the stories of the winners of the 18th EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We'll be back again next week. Till then, from all of us here on the team, goodbye and many thanks for watching. Focus. Innovate. Enable.